Hello, everybody. Andy Jacob here with the dot-com magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. I have a great show. You know, you watch the show. You know we talk about experts. We talk about specialization. We talk about that when you specialize in a certain space, when you specialize in a certain thing, that's much better than being a generalist. So we always talk to experts and specialists in their field. And one thing that's very important, obviously, because you watch the show is you know how important it is for you to get your company seen. You know how important it is to get your company discovered. You know how important it is to really to have an online presence that's very, very important. And We've been able to invite a real expert and specialist on the show today. His name is Mr. Will Palmer, and he's the CEO and founder of Growth Lab. And let me tell you, they specialize, like I mentioned earlier, in one very specific space, and that's the law space. And they help their law firms throughout the country. I mean, we're talking about major league law firms get this type of exposure that's very important for their law firms. Because remember, if you're an attorney, you're in the legal profession, you need clients. So you need to be seen. And what people don't think about is lawyers go to school for years and years. They have their specialty and their practice, but they don't really understand how to get the exposure that's necessary to bring new clients in. So Will has the expertise and his team has done such a great job at Growth Lab. I wanted to bring him on the show to talk about it all. Will, welcome to the dot-com magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. Hey, Andy. Great to be here. Good to see you again. It's great to see you again, Will. You're doing such great work. So many people are talking about the Growth Lab, of course, and you specialize in law firms. Before we get started, because there's a lot of things that we can learn from you with your you know, world-class expertise about getting exposure that any entrepreneur can learn from. But before we go there, let's talk about what you do at a high level. Pull the lens back to 30,000 feet. You know, we always ask the same question because we sort of become known for that question. And tell us about the Growth Lab. Yeah, it's been a really exciting last 18 months or so with our business as we've evolved. And just to get a little bit of background around me and, and where this business is and what we do, I've been in sales and professional marketing for close to 15 years. I've had the privilege of working exclusively with the legal niche for approaching 10 years of that, believe it or not, and, and have just been exposed to a lot of different scenarios around marketing and business development for law firms that I've just discovered what works really well, what doesn't work, what produces return on investment, what wastes money. And we've just really honed in some really specific things related to a law firm's online presence, related to client and case acquisition, specifically search engine optimization, digital ads we run on Google and other search engines in a law firm's website that can really put a marketing system in place on the back end of a law firm and their business model so that they can focus, like you alluded to, at being you know, hopefully great attorneys and serving their clients and have a marketing team of true legal experts behind them that can kind of understand the science of what it takes to be successful with law firm marketing, which is why we we moved to the name Growth Lab. It really alludes to what we hang our hat on, which is just wanting to be the best and work with the best, but also our our passion towards innovation and creativity and working with some of the really just evolving technologies in the space around marketing that put our clients at a real advantage compared to their competitors and showing up in search and getting more clients and cases. Yeah, so important, Will, you know, for the entrepreneurs watching the show, attorneys are like any other type of business. They need to have a pipeline and they need to have a consistent pipeline of potential clients that they can share their information with, share their wares with, if you will, so that they have a continually burgeoning business. And Will, you're a real expert at that. Let's talk about it because I know that it's all data driven with you. I mean, you're sort of the data driven science expert. I want to get into that in a minute. But before we do, when a law firm reaches out to you, they say, Will, we've heard about what you're doing at Growth Lab. What does that first conversation sound like with the law firm or the head of the law firm or the attorney themselves? That's a really important question, I think, because one of the reasons I started this company is because I feel like there's a just whole host of, you know, I hate to say imposters within marketing out there, but it's just the sad truth. It's the world we live in. A lot of people are trying to make money out there. And 
And I will say the, the nuances that are required for a marketer to understand within legal because of how incredibly competitive the legal niche is in order to be successful are, are vast. And it, there are very far and few between marketers that understand those nuances, I, I will just say. And so having that first call is, is frankly a two-way vetting process to ensure that we're not wasting a law firm's time or money, or they're not wasting our time because we only want to work with firms that we know we can help grow. And I think establishing some trust around our expertise is really important. But that first call is also to really understand sort of their company DNA and understand their law firm growth goals, you know, outside of just saying, hey, I want more clients and cases, or, you know, I'm spending all this money around marketing and in a website and a alleged SEO. I don't know what works or isn't working. I don't know what they're doing for me every month, which is something we hear most in most instances. They just have no idea what's working, what they're paying for. Um, why are you better? It's about, you know, marketing aside, what as an attorney are you really trying to do? I, I want to know you as a person. Are you right out of law school that don't have much money? What's the, if you had a dollar to invest, where can you put that dollar and prioritize it. Or maybe you're a, a partner at a law firm that is just hungry and you know an overachiever and is savvy and wants to be the very best and do what every other attorney isn't doing and approach things creatively. Or maybe you're trying to get out of the trenches and you know hire or enter new markets. We wanna know, you know how can we create better work-life balance for you? How can we be super selective on the kinds of clients and cases you're after? Because just, just because you say you're a personal injury lawyer doesn't mean you just want any injury case out there. They're not all created equal. If you're a family law client, you don't want to take every divorce case. Maybe you've been around a while and you're looking for high contested, high asset type stuff. So there's just a lot of uh, even nuances within the kinds of cases and practice area you, you want to bring in. So our job is simple. Understand all of those things. See if there's anything you're doing right now within marketing that that has gaps or critical problems that are preventing more qualified potential clients from finding you online calling you and becoming a paid client. And we diagnose those gaps in a non-salesy way. It's just a very consultative approach. And then we can share, hey, let's go back. Let me do some homework and share what we would recommend you do to fix those problems and kind of go from there. But it's, it's certainly a very informal call to build some trust and rapport and show how to fix problems. Yeah, I love it, Will. It's so interesting what you say. And entrepreneurs in any space or field can really learn from that because like you mentioned, there's certain niches in the legal space. And within the niche, there's another niche. And if you sp spray the money around in marketing and you don't focus in using the data and using the specific niches that you're trying to attract to your firm, then that's a big waste of money. And that's one thing that you've become a real expert at at Growth Lab is understanding your customers in a way that drives the marketing dollars in a very pinpointed way. So let's talk about that because that's a real interesting thing that you do for your customers. Yeah, it, it's it's huge. I mean, not only do we need to understand our customers, but it's our customers' customers. So the legal consumer and how is the legal consumer, you know, finding an attorney online? It's not it's not linear. And it's not a simple answer. And so we understand through data, and there's lots of tools out there that understand if you're if you have a pressing legal question and you're trying to find an attorney to you know help get more compensation from an injury or you know divorce and or criminal charges, I keep mentioning these examples. Um, what are you actually putting into search to get those questions answered? And and what we understand when we actually do some what we call keyword research. Because it's based upon your practice areas, you know, what you need to be, you know, the keywords you need to be trying to rank for, how competitive your metro is. Is it highly competitive, large metro, medium, small metro? Are you going after rural? And then what are your, you know, what are your practice areas and your staff, what people are searching? So what what most marketers do, whether they're serving legal exclusively or not, is they just understand, okay, you're a personal injury attorney, you want car accident cases, we're gonna to try to get you to rank for car accident attorney. The problem with that approach is that it's, it's maybe a high volume keyword, some consumers searching for it, a lot of marketers and attorneys search for it, so it's skewed. It's the most competitive, it's the most expensive, and it also produces the lowest conversion. In other words, somebody typing that in is going to pull up three, four, five attorney websites, see who looks the most legitimate, and they may or may not call you. What we think is a better use of, of you mentioned pinpointing and targeting is understanding that 
there are a thousand ways people actually search for somebody that needs a car wreck attorney. And it may be, do I even need a lawyer after an accident or mentioning a specific insurance company and how to get more compensation? Or do I take their, you know, settlement offer? Or, you know, I had this kind of injury in this kind of intersection with this kind of vehicle. I mean, there are lots of things you can search for. That is where we can say, hey, there's a lot of volume in this whole world of what we call long tail or research oriented searches. And when we push content and SEO and paid ads out towards those pieces, those keywords, less competitive, higher conversion, better quality lead. And that's where we can really start to differentiate our our strategy amongst everybody else. Yeah, well, it's so interesting. And in this type of selling that you do, this consultative selling, people understand when somebody knows what they're talking about. I mean, when you just explain it like that, and I'm an attorney or any business owner, I I start having light bulbs go off in my head. It starts resonating for me that, you know, maybe I was using another firm. Maybe I was trying it myself. Maybe somebody inside my firm was doing it. Maybe I had my son-in-law trying it. But this is all about data. And it's a data-driven way. I'm going to call it data-driven science to make sure that you're getting the right potential client to your to your client, to your law firm at the right time, at exactly the right moment that their potential client needs that service from that attorney. So that's remarkable. Do you also talk to your clients about their presence? I mean, what happens if you do this great job at marketing, but their website doesn't look appealing and you drive traffic to the website right at the right time a client needs their offering from the attorney, but the website doesn't look great and there's no way to really leave information or call or fill out a form. And all of a sudden that great lead that potentially you drove goes nowhere because they don't like the way the website looks. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. I love that you brought that up because we're, we're talking about the nuances of legal and legal consumer search behaviors, which is a great and very fascinating thing to understand. But stepping back and looking at just how a marketing system should work in a law firm you, you need three things to happen and they all have to, it's like three legs of a stool. They all have to happen for this whole thing to work, which is one, we're talking about originally driving awareness to their website through SEO channels, organic reviews or paid ads, whatever the case is, referrals even certainly. And then does that traffic actually understand through engagement of what their website looks like, who you are, what do you do? How do I contact you? And really what I tell lawyers is, do you answer the question effectively of why choose you, period? And, you know, a lot of people fail at that piece of it. And for us, a lot, you know, something I've been asked a lot is like, how do you know if if it's a potential good client or, you know, we're vetting you as much as you're vetting us? Well, part of it is to help our clients understand that for us to be successful together as a partnership, you know, we will turn business down if they don't understand that you need awareness, you need people engaged with what they see, and then you need to manage leads the right way. And that's the third leg of the stool that I forgot to mention. So, you know, awareness, engagement, conversion that to make this work. And if, if people don't understand that and don't have those processes dialed in, or at least have us, you know, open to new ideas where we can share how to dial them in, their marketing dollars are going to fail every time if, if those three things aren't always in place. So that's a great point you bring up that is critical to the success of any of this stuff. Yeah, well, it makes sense. So you do all the work and let's say somebody's looking for an attorney to help them with a very specific injury or a very specific type of a crash. Let's say it's a motorcycle crash and you bring that potential client to the website or to a landing page of your client, the attorney, but that that website's talking about corporate law. It has nothing to do with, you know, with uh, helping people with a motorcycle injury. I mean, that's just a recipe for disaster. And so many people make that mistake, don't they? Yeah, they do. And they, they don't quite understand that. And that there's a real cognitive decision behavioral process. If we're going to get, you know, in the psyche of, again, of the legal consumer where, you know, if you can be authoritative and an expert with that matches the intent of their search and their problem as closely as you can and as better as best as you can that the likelihood of them viewing you in your law firm as the authority in the space is much higher and you have a much greater likelihood of getting that call in quality lead because a lot of 
law firms come to us also that says, yeah, our phone's ringing maybe off the hook, but it's a bunch of junk and it's sucking all my staff hours or my hours trying to deal with the intake of these. Why is this happening? And a lot of it can stem from what you just mentioned. There's a disconnect between the search happening, what your site or ads are showing up for. They don't realize that. No one's telling them that. They're just answering the phone with, with little to no additional knowledge as to why that piece is, is disconnected. That's some things we can uncover pretty quick. Yeah, it's so interesting. You talk about lead management as well. That's an important component of, of, of great success in, in you know, sort of the marketing uh, toolkit. When we talk about Growth Lab and we think about the attorneys, I mean, they're, they're busy doing their thing. I mean, it's, it's not easy to be an attorney. I mean, you're, you're working hard hours and, you know, they're getting up early and they're, you know, burning the daylight hours like any entrepreneur. Is this idea that when they hire Growth Lab, Will, that you take you take care of the things and get off of their plate and off of their table the things that they don't really want to do because they're so busy building their practice. Is that the whole idea behind it? Exactly. I mean, these attorneys are very specialized in, in areas of the law and their and their clients. They they just want somebody that they can trust that they can proactively know what to do and come to them, which is sadly very rare in marketing, where you know a lot of clients are coming from a place that sort of fall into two buckets. Either they're with a large provider, I won't name names, that sort of are well-known brand names in legal marketing that put together these sort of canned one-size-fits-all services that check a lot of boxes within the marketing ecosystem. Like, hey, we're going to post on social media. We're going to write some blog posts. We're going to do quote-unquote website optimization. You're going to get assigned a strategist. And it's just all this fluff. And frankly, it's a lot of times, and sadly, BS that it's is unfortunate. Or they're with a smaller, more boutique, maybe local agency that's down the road, or maybe they share a building or, or an office space with an agency that does, does marketing for small businesses that, again, doesn't understand the legal marketing nuances, but is basically spending money, their money, the, the law firm's money, testing and guessing and trying to figure it out. Where we come in is we have these proven data-driven solutions that we have done for years that we can implement and customize based on what they're looking for. And that gives them a lot of peace of mind that, hey, I've got somebody looking at this stuff that works only in legal, that's seen it all, that understands my circumstance, that is not surprised by anything I tell them because they, you know, again, going on 10 years of this stuff, our team is built as very entrepreneurial, like-minded, hungry um, business leaders in this space. And we're very similar to our clients in that we like to win. Our first core value as a company is when our clients win, we win. And we're just as competitive as our clients at wanting to dominate at what we do and be the very best. I did not build, build this business to be a commodity type of service where we have a bunch of little clients flooding in and we're just stamping out these services. It's not fun. It's not exciting to me. I'd much rather see somebody email me, which happens frequently over here that, hey, we just opened up a new office. I just hired my 10th attorney or partner or associate. Um, hey, we, we, we can double our investment in marketing because it's working like gangbusters. You know, what's next? Well, what creative ideas can your team go and figure out and bring to us versus, hey, let me tell you that this, this top spot or this little widget that I sell for marketing is about to get taken up by somebody else and hurry up. And it's not, it's, I'll say this to, to finish what I'm saying about this question. The top law firms you see in search that dominate their local markets for client acquisition, case acquisition are not approaching this stuff the same way as everybody else. They're not. They know a secret about SEO and growing their firms. And that's really understanding a customized approach with a super uh, knowledgeable and niche team that knows what they're doing. That's the recipe for success. Yeah, it's awesome. You've done such a great job at it. You have so many case studies from law firms, you know, that are doing such great work. And your clients really outperform their peers on Google search rankings and website traffic as well. You have a great team of experts that work with you. And the one thing that I love about what you do from what we've been able to garner is you have this belief that you want to give full transparency to your clients. I mean, I love that so much. They can yeah, they can pick up the phone and call you. You can put them in touch with a member of your team. You talk about it. You communicate about it. Where did that 
passion that you have as a leader, you know, with the corporate culture starting at the top with let's be transparent. Let's give 100% transparency to the clients. Where did that idea really come from in your career that now has, you know, proven so successful at what you're doing at Growth Lab? Yeah, I, I appreciate you bringing up the transparency thing. I think it starts with just me putting myself in my client's shoes. And as a consumer of various things, including technologies and softwares and, and vendors, I guess I have a high, I think most consumers nowadays have a kind of a high BS radar or meter. And, and I don't like when things are sugarcoated or you're talking or I, just shoot it to me direct. I just think that's a good way to live life, be you know truthful, transparent, direct. Um, and, and that's how we approach this business as well. And I think with SEOs particularly, it's one of the most, maybe the most exploited marketing service in legal and in, in any business even outside of legal. Because again, marketers can use these fancy terms, terminology and words and send a fancy monthly report out with all these numbers that, and metrics that are sort of cherry picked. I, you know, I can look at any website and probably be forced to cherry pick numbers to make it look like good things are happening. But the bottom line with transparency is, Number one, what exactly from a service deliverable are you providing me? Most people don't know that. They just say they're optimizing things. What what things? What does that mean? They don't know and they can't be told that. What are you doing? I want exact tactics. And then how is that translating into more signed clients and cases and more revenue? The right clients, the right cases. And that can be backed. You can back in that formula by saying, you know, who cares if your website is, is, has more impressions one month, or who cares if you have a keyword, like, you know, do I need a lawyer after a car accident move from position 33 to position 15? Well, guess what? Position 15 in the middle of page two on Google gets hardly any clicks. I mean, close to zero. That's a fake metric. Impressions on your website's a fake metric. Are you getting more qualified leads? That's a real metric. Is your revenue increasing? That's a real metric. Uh, what? How many leads are turning into qualified clients and cases? And is your call volume in your website traffic in the generalized numbers trending in the right direction? Because if you're increasing rank for things, but your site traffic isn't up and your calls and leads and form submissions aren't up and your revenue is not up and you don't understand how that's all connected, then you, you may want to consider looking at different options. And that's where our dashboard comes in. I want to mention quickly something that's really important, I think, that distinguishes us as well, is that we don't outsource this SEO stuff to, to you know, people even outside of the U.S. or even within the U.S. The, the account managers on our team that speak directly with our clients, client-facing reporting results, are the ones doing a lot of the actual execution of the SEO work themselves. So they're not just reporting on what a team behind them is doing. Sometimes they are, but they're actually doing a lot of the work themselves. And that's a very big difference. That's why, you know, we're not the cheapest out there, but you get what you pay for with this stuff. Um, and that's where that transparency piece is just so critical. And that's where the rubber meets the road in terms of return on investment increasing for marketing. I love that, Will. For the marketers and for the business owners and the CEOs and the founders watching the show, rewind what Will just said. I mean, he he basically gave you a... a I'll call it a Harvard MBA on marketing. I mean, that's exactly what it's all about right there. And we've said that before. It's about, look, are you getting qualified leads? Are you getting qualified clients? Are your revenues increasing? That's pretty easy to figure out, you know, from a marketing standpoint, especially when you have somebody like Will or his team behind it. And what I love about what you do, Will, and this is very unusual, is your frontline people, are really the frontline people. I mean, not only are they talking to the clients, but they're doing the work. So they're connected to it. They're psychologically connected to their own work and they're psychologically connected to their client. And of course they want what's best for their client. So then in turn, that makes them put out and produce the best possible work. Let's talk about corporate culture because that all starts at the top with you. You know, we talk about it all the time. When you hire somebody to join your team, based on what we just talked about. What's the single most important thing you're looking for for someone to join Growth Lab? Is it their experience? Is it commitment to clients? Is it their passion? What are you looking for? 
Yeah, you know, there's there's kind of a few things that sort of sit within our core values that I think are necessary to help our law firms be in the best position to achieve long-term growth and success with their marketing dollars. I mentioned when our clients win, we win, which sits over the top of everything. But in terms of specifically hiring people, we really want hungry overachievers with a deep-rooted desire to be the best. And I think that can translate into a lot of different things, which is why I'm sort of putting that as number one. It can be the best at being a student of the game, constantly educating ourselves to, you know, Google algorithm updates or changes in marketing technology or what law firms are able to provide um, as, you know, we're in a post-COVID world and how their business model is changing. So being the best and educating ourselves, but then it ties into kind of the second thing, which is relentlessly pursuing this piece around innovation and just a better way of doing things. I think that is so huge because a lot of the people that we hire come from other marketing teams and agencies because they are put in a box creative creatively. They cannot serve clients in ways outside of that box. And again, it kind of boils down to an agency figuring out what are the high margin, um, you know, revenue things that we can stamp out and repeat a thousand times over, which can work by the way, outside of legal. I really believe that. But again, because of the competitive nature of legal marketing, it just doesn't cut it. Um, And we get a lot of those employees that are like, gosh, I'm breathing a, a, a really big, deep breath of fresh air because you're telling me I can create a personal relationship with my clients. You're telling me that there are things that I can do outside the box that are going to help them win. And I can use my knowledge and expertise to help them leverage and be successful. I didn't get that before. To me, that seems crazy. And I'm like, I can't believe that. But that's a lot of times where, you know, the situations are coming from. Yeah, I love it. You know, your people are not only thinking outside the box, they're stomping on the box and destructing <laughs> the box and destroying the box and kicking that box to the side and, and really, you know, making new pathways. And I yeah, love that. Yeah, with the box. Yeah, like you got boxes. it. Let's, that, should be the, that should be the name of your TED Talk <laughs> or, or the new book you're going to write. All right, now, yeah. Let's talk about SEO before I let you go, okay? For the people watching the show, you probably know that search engine optimization Things change in SEO, and it's hard to keep up. What do you do to keep up with the changes? And maybe you could just share a few things that have changed recently that kind of might catch the ear of our and our in the eyes of our viewers right now. Yeah. So, how are we keeping up with SEO? I mean, on the front end, it's obviously like I mentioned just moments ago, educating ourselves, understanding you know when Google has different requirements. I mean, the the unfortunate thing is. It's Google's racetrack we're all racing on. They kind of make up the rules. We're we're sort of strapped to that fact. So that is what it is. But there's a lot of new pieces of technology that when we have a first call with a prospective client or client and talk about how we can, for example, put in a keyword that is something they care about, like, you know, high asset divorce lawyer in Houston, Texas or something. And we can see who's ranking at the top for those terms and figure out how, you know, that piece of content, how many words is it? How many headings does it have? What kinds of specific search keywords in their frequency are inside of that content? How many images does it have? I mean, you can see competitive, your competitor's hand in poker, so to speak, with some of this, this AI and search technology. So understanding the changes in search, but then leveraging technology that our competitors simply do not evolve and leverage that allows us to do things and produce solutions that are incredibly innovative, that move and evolve at the speed of digital marketing trends is really what separates. And that's what's fun for our team. And that's what I'm talking about when we're talking about relentlessly pursuing to be the best. When you can take those pieces of data and, and actually put where the rubber meets the road and creating content or optimizing your website or your Google business profile with all of this data and, and, and law firms just say, wow, I'm gonna let you guys do what you got to do. Keep doing it. And the numbers keep rising. That's really, really fun. Yeah, I love it. I I look at it like you and your team, Will, are playing what I call 3D chess. And the other people in the field are sort of playing checkers with, you know, with stones or marbles. They're just not going deep into it because you're using, you're kind of a technology geek and you're using all the available technology to stay at the speed of trends, which you mentioned, which is super cool and super interesting. So, wow. I mean, there's so much to unpack here. I'm going to let you go. I know you've only cut out a certain amount of time for me, Will, but before we do, you know, 
I want to ask you about entrepreneurship. It's a way we always sort of send off our entrepreneurs on their journey during these interviews, because we do have people that watch the show, of course, that are entrepreneurs themselves, and maybe they're having a tough time. I mean, this morning, I mean, I was going through something on my on my email system. I was having a little bit of a tough time this morning. I said to my wife, I said, honey, this is going to be one of those days. But of course, I kept on pushing and figured it out. But for the younger entrepreneurs watching the show, what kind of advice can you give to them about how to get through a tough time in business, Will? I think just understanding that that's part of, of entrepreneurship. I think if you're creative at problem solving and you can sell, I think those are really the two biggest, some of the two biggest, most important attributes of an entrepreneur. Um, you just got to go take action. And, you know, if, if it's scary, you know, I remember the moment my wife and I were talking and she kind of grabbed my face when I kept trying to put off quitting my corporate, you know, six figure job to do all this. And was like, tell me a reason why you shouldn't do it right now. And I just couldn't in good conscience give her a good answer. And there was no reason. I mean, timing is never perfect, but if you just do it, the rewards are incredible. And when you can serve your clients and, and do something special and pursue something different and better and show them what that looks like, which is one of the reasons I get up every day. And you can start viewing every single day of the week, not as, oh, I dread Monday or I, I hate Sundays because I'm just anxious about the work week. That is no way to live 40 years of your work life. I, I would encourage people to think about that and be courageous. I have, I'll say this last thing. My favorite quote that I sort of connect to myself a lot of times is happiness is a form of courage. And if you think about that, it's completely true. If you want to be happy and, and have a fulfilled life with meaning, a lot of courage is behind getting to that point. And if you're okay with that and you, and you step into that courage and you do what scares you, it's a really, really empowerful, empowering and powerful thing. So hopefully that would help them move to the next step. Will, I love it so much. It's great to see you again. We, we're following what you're doing. I mean, Growth Labs is Growth Lab SEO, of course, we're going to put the link below your, your interview so people can reach out. It's really great. And I mean, it's about the qualified leads, the qualified clients, and of course, the increase in revenue. And, you know, it's it's a data-driven science. Use all the newest tools for your clients. I mean, the reputation you have is amazing. The case studies are remarkable. And like you said, you know, there's an old saying, you know, and we know what it is about something being cheap. I mean, you're not going to be the cheapest guy on the block, but what you get and what the law firms get from the professionalism and that direct transparency with your company is remarkable. And, and uh, you know, if it's cheap, you're probably getting something cheap that's not going to work anyway. So, Will, great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for coming back on the Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. Thanks, Andy. Talk to you soon. Appreciate you having me. 